After a few months wait, the new planner app that was announced at the end of last year is now available to preview in Teams. In this video, I'm going to take you through how to get the preview, or how to make sure you don't see it yet if that's what you choose, what you can expect from it in some initial hands-on testing, what licensing you need, and what we're still waiting for. As always, the demos you see in this video have been made with demo accounts and you're never seeing anyone's private information. But before we dig in, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on the needs of smaller businesses. If you're interested in working with me, or you'd like to learn more about my book on AI adoption for small and medium-sized business leaders who's in the co-pilot seat, check out the links below. So if you missed the announcement last year, you may have been unaware that a new planner app was coming. For some time, the world of to-dos and tasks and plans in Microsoft 365 has deserved a fairly comprehensive upgrade, as it's been really confusing due to so many disconnected parts of the ecosystem. Apps like To-Do or Task by Planner and To-Do that you've had in Teams have gone some way to fix this, but more work was needed. What we knew from this previous announcement was that a new Planner app was coming and would first appear in Teams, replacing the existing Task by Planner and To-Do app and unifying your task management in one place, whether they are tasks you create for yourself or are assigned to you on a plan. And also, this new tool was going to bring into it the power of Project for the Web, which is an existing add-on tool available for more complex projects. However, as with all early announcements, there were a bunch of questions that were left unanswered. Now, with the release of this preview, we get some answers. So let's dig into what's new. Jumping into Teams, we can see the new Planner experience in the Planner Preview app looks largely like the experience that was shown off last year. Access to the Preview app is controlled by your Teams update policy, and those who already have access to the Teams preview features from their preview policy will already be seeing the new experience. For administrators who want certain users to see this or not to see this right now, you could just jump into the Teams Admin Center and modify your global or custom update policies to have the desired effect. This new app very much follows the visual cues of the new Teams app, and you can see that the options available here are now a little different. You have the My Day view that's familiar from To Do. You could also view your tasks grouped by different categories. You can look at the plans you have access to. You can even pin your most used plans and create new ones from here. You have the option to get the menu out the way to give your data more real estate. And overall, this very much is a visual upgrade that seems to make everything accessible in one place. In the plans themselves, you have a range of views across the top, including grid, schedule, and charts. It all looks very clean and well integrated into Teams. If we jump back into the All Tasks view in My Tasks, you can see that we have a source column that shows us where that task came from. Here you can see items coming from your personal plans, your team plans, your to-do tasks, flagged emails, loop task components, and loop-based task lists in Teams meeting notes. For those who are OneNote users, there is both good and bad news. If you tend to create Outlook tasks in OneNote using the Outlook task flag, these appear as private tasks here. However, if you rely just on checkbox to-do lists in OneNote, those are still out in the cold in regards to this new integration. I really like this new view, but I have run into some problems with it. The biggest is this. You see here there's an attachment with my flagged Outlook email. I can easily jump in here and go to the related email. This is even true for loop-based Teams notes that link back to that notes page. But for loop workspace pages or task components, there's no link here. And the same is true for plans. So I would think that very often you would want to refer to wherever that task had come from. And there's no real way to do this for some of these tasks here. This is also a rollback of the functionality that exists in the non-preview planner right now. If we jump into the new plan area and create a basic planner board, you can see that along with the option to add the plan to your pinned plans on the left, you can also do this from the My Plans view retrospectively. You can optionally add that plan to a group. 
So the default is that it's not added to a group and is a personal plan. Once you've created a personal plan, you can share it by adding it to a group, either by creating a new group or adding it to an existing one. So you could, for example, create your personal plan and get it set up just as you need before sharing it with your team. It's not possible to share a personal plan without creating a group, and you can't turn a group plan back into a personal plan, although you could just remove all the other members of the group if you wanted. For clarity, when I'm referring to a group, we're talking about a Microsoft 365 group. The new planner has it set out on its own to create some new way of sharing in Microsoft 365. And yes, loop workspaces, I'm looking at you when adding in that caveat. Next, we'll consider the new planner's premium features. But before we do, I want to ask you a question. What's your approach to AI adoption in your business? If you're yet to start building your plan and you're not sure of where to start, you might benefit from my new on-demand course, Fly Into the Age of Co-Pilots, focused on helping leaders in smaller businesses learn about AI technology and its benefits. And right now, for an introductory period, it's completely free. Check it out at the link below. So one of the big new features is the integration of premium plans, which is really the integration of Project for the Web into Planner. Project for the Web offers a number of features that Planner does not. The one that most Planner users probably first run into that they would like is task dependencies, but there's a whole bunch of other things too. Now, with premium plans, you can bring the functionality of Project for the Web into Planner, all in one place. I have to admit that getting this working took some effort. I added Project Plan 1 licenses to a couple of users and then tried to use premium plans. The app indicated I could, but every time I tried to create one, it errored out. After waiting for a period of time and the error not going away, I wondered if the issue was not having already used Project, so I accessed Project at project.microsoft.com and created a new project from there. This took an age but eventually worked, and then allowed me to access premium plans in Planner. On top of this though, through my testing, I found this connection to be fairly unreliable and at times terribly slow. In premium plans, you add a timeline, people and goals view that you don't get in Planner Basic. You can also group tasks into tasks and subtasks, allowing you finer grained control over your project. I'm sure there are already very good Project for the Web tutorials out there, so I won't reinvent the wheel by digging into this here. These premium plans are simply Project for the Web projects. You can even open and view them from project.microsoft.com if you wish. However, there are some pretty significant weaknesses in this integration. The most significant of which is that assigned tasks in Project for the Web or premium plans don't seem to make it to your My Tasks view. This is on the list of roadmap items for the product, and this is a preview. But I do frankly think it's a really odd choice for Microsoft to bring this to public preview without this fairly foundational capability. With Planner's premium capabilities, you also get access to Copilot. Kinda. As I mentioned before, I added Project Plan 1 licenses to a couple of accounts to try this out. And once I'd got through my problems making it work and tried out premium plans, next thing was to try Copilot. And uh-oh, wrong license. So it turns out Project Plan 1 at $10 a month gives you access to premium plans, but to get Copilot in Planner, you need Project Plan 3 at $30 a month. Even though Planner is part of Microsoft 365 and I have Copilot for Microsoft 365 licensed on my account, right now I need to drop yet another $30 a month to see Copilot in Planner. This is getting real expensive real fast. So first of all, Copilot is not a premium feature available across Planner. It's only available in the context of premium plans. And given that premium plans are only available to premium licensed users, someone with a license that gives them access to Copilot in Planner gains zero advantage from it unless everyone has a premium license too. This is a very different approach to Copilot than anywhere else across the suite right now. So far, there's not much to report here. I tried getting Copilot to set up a plan to help me run my YouTube channel. It couldn't do this and decided I needed a plan for a business startup instead. It could create a goal for me, it could create buckets for me, but it couldn't do something fairly basic like tell me how many uncompleted tasks there are in my plan. 
I've argued for the value of Copilots that help you get started in a fairly basic way in Copilot for Microsoft 365. Because you may genuinely have a pretty low level of PowerPoint skills, for example, and still be the target market for that license. However, by the time you get to Project Plan 3, this is a fairly niche license for people who have a decent involvement in complex projects, and the likelihood that they need too much help in very basic tasks in Project or Planner using Copilot is, in my opinion, fairly low. Right now, this Planner Copilot is a preview, but it's also a party trick, not something serious that 99% of people with a license to use it are going to get any real benefit from at all. So, what did we learn here? Overall, I like the new direction of Planner. I think it's a visual upgrade on what we had before and shows a strong intent to resolve some of the big issues we have had in the task management space across Microsoft 365. There is still more to do, but the foundations are there. There definitely has to be more to come on licensing. I firmly believe that ultimately we will get a Planner Premium license in the same way that we've got Teams Premium, but at what price? I cannot believe that many people will jump on a $30 a month license to add a limited Copilot to one product. Surely eventually their plan must be for Copilot in Planner to be part of Copilot for Microsoft 365 and there be an added Planner Premium license to get premium plans. The big question though is the foundation all of this is built on. When it was first announced last year, I highlighted how Planner and Project for the Web are built on entirely different technologies. As it stands right now, the new planner isn't the culmination of those technologies being truly integrated. It's just a new UI that fairly neatly wraps together two things that are really entirely different to kind of appear as if they are much the same. In day-to-day -day use, what's the harm? But if we think about the world of makers, low-code citizen developers, and those looking to extend Copilot, the difference is just an added layer of complexity where on the back end there are now two different ways of doing one set of things. I also think it's interesting that this advance to a new app hasn't built out a solution to allow all task content to be indexed by Copilot for Microsoft 365, which I would think would be extremely helpful. Should you rush out to try the new planner preview? If you have trouble tracking tasks from across sources, then this may enhance your life today. But if you want to try it out for the benefits of premium plans or Copilot, it's great to play with to see where it's at, but I'm not sure it's going to revolutionize your workday just yet. That said, if you tried it, what did you think? Or will you be trying it based on my testing? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end, and until the next video, bye bye.